Uh, hello everyone. Okay, uh, closure night again. <laughs> so today I, I want to talk about the single page application front end development with refreshment reagent. Uh, okay. <coughs> so uh, single page application. Uh, so now everyone is talking about it. Uh, actually, it's a web application or website in fits on a single page. Previously, we do the web development. We have a bunch of UIs where we move back and forth. Uh, we, we post a request or we, we do something. Then the end <coughs> back end server will render the page for us then to send to the client. But now everything changed. Uh, we have this SPA and also people want to compete with native desktop and the mobile application. Wow. <laughs> so well, what does it mean for us as develop well, a headache? <coughs> so we can see that we, will, we have a client and a server code sep totally separated. So when we do design the things, when we're testing, when we send to the dev operation, a lot of problems. Uh, we, we can see like uh, front end and the back end, when, when we want to deliver to production, but people find, oh, th we are using the different contract. Boom. So we also, <coughs> the data transport and the binding b become a big problem for us. Previously, no such problem because everything located in backend. So it's a load from database, it's render in the server itself, then sends only HTML to the front end to do the uh, rendering. But now, no, we, even the client will handle some bi uh, logic, <coughs> business logic. So we get a lot of uh, new technologies. Now we have HTML5. It's uh, a lot of a lot of new terms. Uh, we have Ajax WebSocket, uh, some server push events. We we have uh, <coughs> file uploads, all <coughs> all such kinds of APIs. Uh, so we have also have a lot of new frameworks. We have AngularJS. We have React. Uh, we have. Uh, uh, so many things need to learn to handle. Yeah, you you, you can uh, look at the wiki pages. So it's talk about all the challenges, all the <coughs> things as a developer need to take care. So here comes our savers. First, functional programming. Uh, <coughs> it's <coughs> really make us make the things simple, make the things composable. Because we, we don't have the state. <coughs> no, not say, not, not have the state. We, we can limit the, our states in a very small area. Uh, we have, with closure, we have the data oriented design and the data driven. Actually, in the last three months, we are doing all such design and uh, implementation. We, we find we have feel more and more love with the data-oriented design. Everything flows from the data model then to the pipeline till the end to render in the client. <coughs> closure and the closure script. Yeah, um, previously uh, in the last uh, page we say we have the code separation problem, client and the server, now it's separated. So in <coughs> many, uh, in our current uh, workflow, we use different programming language. In the front end, we use JavaScript. In the back end, we use Java or others, Scala, Ruby, such kind of things. But Clojure and Clojure scripts make us use Clojure. I think they are almost the same. I, I don't say totally, but <coughs> we use almost same languages in the front end and the back end. And also, even with our current work, we are trying to um, investigate 
uh, we run <coughs> when we're doing the development, we even run the uh, logic in the front end, means which com <coughs> all compiled to closure script. When we send to a uh, dev operation, we separate the code. We, we <coughs> deliver the business logic to the server. So we, we don't need to worry about because everything, they, they run on the same thing. <coughs> yep, sorry. Oh, what's wrong? Okay, then reframe. Uh, reframe is a very uh, good designed framework. Although, actually, we dropped it uh, two or three months ago. Uh, no, two or three weeks ago. Uh, we, we find it has some problem. Uh, I, I will talk about it uh, later. Um, but uh, I think a lot of concepts can be uh, referred in, in the project. OK, uh, what is reframe? Uh, Reframe is a framework for writing SPA. Actually, it uh, includes uh, the basic um, idea is uh, it has a <coughs> it syncs in the front end. We have a single app DB, so we, we store the all the all our models, uh, even the rendering information, everything into a front end DB. <coughs> then the, this DB can use uh, <coughs> can um, how do you say use atom to be directly mapped to the view. Then the view rendered by reagent and the React. <coughs> we can do some dispatch uh, from the DOM level. Then it will be handled. Actually, um, it's uh, in in the end it's like a event queue. So front end can dispatch all the events. Then in the end, the event handlers will take all your events, then reduce all these events into the um, <coughs> DB. It's a very common uh, pattern with the uh, closure and closure script. It's a reduce pattern. Means um, also you can see it's a event source. So you, you, you have an initial model then you collect all the such kind of events. Then you re reduce into a new model. Then it ref reflect to the view again. OK, uh, uh, any questions? Or <coughs> OK, so uh, this is the main uh, components. So to follow the idea, uh, if you are developer with reframe, you can see you First, you, you need to uh, <coughs> have a DB, uh, DB code. It's a model. Inside it, you also can have some specifications to verify this model. Then you have subs. Subs is um, a query layer. Actually, you, you can define some queries against your uh, DB. You, you define event handlers. So you can see uh, it has uh, event ID, it will return you the DB and uh, the event payload. Then you can do some operations on your DB. You can associate, you can reduce uh, anything you want to do. Then you have views. You can see in the view, it subscribe your uh, query. <coughs> then it uh, use hiccup to uh, give the uh, how do you say, uh, HTML or mock HTML then it will be rendered by uh, <coughs> a reagent and uh, react to the DOM. So if you develop with Reframe, uh, th this is like the uh, workflow. Uh, so I, I think I will <coughs> talk about it in the dojo also. So we can uh, try some things. Any question? Mm? Are the events global always? Hmm? The events, are they global? Um, yes, actually, for reframe, it's like, it's a state machine. So it has a global uh, DB, means global model. It has this global uh, state machine. F uh, then it has a queue. You fit the, it fit everything into this queue. Then 
to be consumed by, by this machine. Mm. Any more question? Okay. Uh, so <coughs> we can repeat these patterns. So for large uh, projects, uh, you, you may have um, many panels. So you can repeat it. So you, you separate your codes into your panel one, panel two. Then in, in your panel, you repeat these patterns to your finish your project. Yeah. Even you can see in their demo code, it's, it has a panel. Actually, it's a looting panel. It uh, gets the active panel from the, uh, data, uh, the APVDB. Then it decides which panel to be rendered. To send to the to show in the front end. Okay, uh, this is a bit uh, complex um, idea. Um, previously, I think in the last, I think la last year, I, I present uh, in the meetup uh, for uh, uh, youth. Actually, at that time, uh, Reframe don't have this concept. Um, Previously, if you need to handle something like uh, a HTTP request, or even you request some time, for, for example, uh, you, you want to know current time, you need to do new date. But uh, it's changed a lot with uh, effects and co-effects. I think um, the example uh, the author gave is, for example, if you want to know the uh, current time, um, you will embed a side effects in your handler. It will make you difficult to test because your uh, handler is not a pure function again. Um, so <coughs> he brings in these uh, two uh, concepts. It's called effects and co-effects. Um, it's mostly used to move out the uh, impure uh, <coughs> the side effects from the um, function handlers. Um, for example, um, you can register the date as a co-effect. So uh, when you uh, use the event handlers, uh, the reframe will inject this uh, co-effect to you. So um, you, you can reference this co-effect in your handlers. Um, if you are doing the testing, you can replace these co-effects with the, some exacts uh, or with the data instead of um, to call some new dates or such kind of things in your code. <coughs> and also for this uh, effects. Effects is um, previously, it only has um, DB as an effect. But now it also use HTTP. Uh, it has HTTP dispatch, all these things um, to register it so you can use. So uh, from what I think is um, Reframe also moved more and more into uh, uh, data oriented. If you look at its source code, actually now for, for every snapshot, Reframe can be exported as a map. So you can find everything. <coughs> uh, if you uh, dive into it, there, there is a call refresh. Uh, it's a tool to help you to debug all these events, all the uh, <coughs> effects happened. So you, you can see it's used this feature. It captures every snapshot. It finds all the events happen, record it, um, <coughs> and all the, uh, the model snapshot also to show you what happens exactly for every step, for every dispatch. Uh, interceptors. Oh. OK. <laughs> I think it's done. Uh, OK, interceptors is something like uh, middleware. I think I forget to compile in this machine. Um, it's like a debug or path or trim. Um, it's uh, the ideas of middleware. So you can handle the data before 
it's put into the uh, to feed to the handlers. Also, it can have some post effects like debug. So after the handlers happens, it will call the debug to export the results to you. So you can see the, for example, database what is previous and what is next. Uh, any questions? Uh, I, I think that that's uh, almost the reframe. <coughs> so we, um, if you develop with reframe, uh, you use uh, such kind of things like you, you define a model, you define all the <coughs> event handlers, you define your query layer to query the things you need in your front end. Then you <coughs> design all your front end components. Then <coughs> uh, it will be shown. Uh, for these interceptors can help you to massage your data to meet your requirements. Like you, you want debug, um, you want to, um, <coughs> because uh, for all the feeds, like it has some event ID, you, you don't want to use it. You can uh, trim it. Also, it has some paths. For example, your some handlers only focus on part of the DB because you know the maps or have all the branches and sometimes it's very deep. So you can uh, use some uh, such hard um, interceptors to give you only that um, part. So, so those inter interceptors are like uh, cleaning your data? No. It's it's like a middleware. I'm not sure whether, for example, you use Ring, you, you have a middleware. That means um, you, you, you have some incoming data, so you can massage this data. So um, <coughs> you can have the pre or post um, processing on it. What do you usually find yourself using them for? Hmm? What do you usually use them for? In uh, interceptors. In, yeah, in the interceptors, for, uh, I just say, said is, for example, debug. For example, if you want to know the DB changes, you know oh, when this event happened, uh, what, uh, which part of my database has been impacted. So you, you, you put a, a debug interceptor in your registered event. It will output the, your database, the previous and the after. <coughs> Debug, no, but for, for example, the path, there's an interceptor called path. Path means when you do the handlers, you want to only focus um, <coughs> uh, some part of the database. Because now everything in your, every data in your front end, you, can, you may have model, you also can have view data, you have user preference. Your handlers may only be interested in part of uh, such kind of data. So you use paths to uh, slice it, to get uh, those parts. Does that improve your performance? Hmm? Does that improve rendering performance? Or? I, I don't think so. But when you code, but you, when you're doing the code, you don't need to get in uh, a long path to get all, all such kind of data. It will give you directory. Hmm. Also, it will update back. <coughs> What do you store in the DB? Hmm? What do you store in the DB? Everything. Everything you, you, you need. You keep the version hmm? of, for example, you have a model, you keep the version of them? It depends. It depends on what you need. Actually, you have Atom. So sometimes you, you don't need to use the DB to save your model. It's all design and taste. So it depends on the yeah. Oh. Because you, you have Atom, you even can add watch. You, you can know everything when it's changed. You can even somebody uh, developed something like uh, it can be rollback. <coughs> because it's all data, so it gives you such kind of uh, flexibilities. You have this data, you have that data. You, you know when the data has been changed. So you can record these versions. So when you need it, you, you roll back. So it needs some care from the developer uh, of what data is stored, right? Because the DB is different and you need yeah. to switch to everything. 
Yeah, it's, it's a design decision, right? It depends on how complex your application need to be. For normal case, we don't have, uh, or we only care about some kind of things, like we want to do something like undo, or such kind of things. We, we will use these features. Otherwise, uh, I think 80% case, we, we don't use this. <laughs> Okay, um, so pros, um, what do we find good for uh, reframe? Actually, it's a separate of concerns. It's give you, um, it's <coughs> totally separate the view and uh, the logic. So you can do anything to your, log to your model, then it's automatically ma mapped to your view. So you, you don't. So in your view, what you need to do is dispatch, dispatch. So it's totally separated. So th there's no such things. They <coughs> so it makes sure it's uh, com composable because um, reframe uh, it's uh, refer the Elm. Uh, it's in its architecture. It's try to make your code can be composed. You have different things, then you can easily compose them into a new new things. <coughs> like, uh, since it's separate of concern, it's easy to test. As I say, it brings uh, a lot of new concepts. So you uh, make sure your handlers are pure. So pure function, easy to test. So even this uh, the single sentence, I, I think, mean everything, uh, the benefits of this framework. <coughs> Ah, now all comes negative. First, global state. Actually, this one is the very smelly. Um, when we uh, first try to use it in um, to investigate, to do some pilots uh, projects, we, we feel not good because it's a global state. Even now, I think um, people folk the reframe frame <coughs> reframe to uh, to give it separate um, to make it some state local, so you you do the local things <coughs> because for from my experience, the global things uh, like you, you need a worry a lot of things like your key conflict your you you have you even your developers may make mistakes. Um, and also you have very large um, a map you need to care about. <coughs> um, heavily bounded with reagents. Mm, I, we don't think it's a good thing to be bound. Um, for example, even reagent is a very good um, design and a very good front end library, but we also have RAM, we have other things, we have OM, so <coughs> we don't think it should be necessarily bound to reagent. <coughs> even um, I think to just this week, someone published a refrank refrank uh, very I think it's a new framework uh, based on reframe. It's use RAM. It's uh, uh, give you the local state. I think people more and more people use it. More and more people have the same feelings. <coughs> yeah, it's a <coughs> framework. As closure developer, we don't like framework. It's bound. How do you say? Limit your mind. So you, you, you do the things, do the, all the boring things. So you, you follow the workflow <coughs> or work <coughs> to follow all these steps. Later, when you want to change or you want to have some, try some new things, actually, it's very difficult for you. Even our one month pilot project, we find you everywhere we have dispatch, everywhere. The, all, the event handlers keep long and long. Then even some small things, we use some com very complex 
handlers, like a sync handler to handle. Actually, e for example, if we do some core sync things, you, you can do it very concise. Uh, so we moved away, actually. Any questions? Can you make it with local state? Uh, can. Actually, we, we, we have some discussion on the Slack um, channel. <coughs> there are two group of people. One say, one group of people say to avoid this, they use some conventions programming. So they, they have some naming convention. So it seems separate, uh, something local. So because if you need to operate on it, you follow very complex naming convention. The second group is um, they wrap the model. Actually, you, um, <coughs> uh, you, you, it gives you some factory method function. So you, you feed everything, it gives you all the local handlers, local <coughs> uh, subscription. I think that that's the most of two basic ideas. So later you can combine this uh, a local state into a um, bigger tree. No question? Can I have one more? Well, okay, okay. Uh, how different is Reagent from React? I will give you next. Sure. <laughs> So reagent. So <coughs> when we talk about reframe, we, we cannot. We, we must talk about reagent. They are brothers. Reagent is a simple closure script interface to React. It's very good design. If you find in, uh, how do you say, when you do simple things, it's brilliant. It's very e easy to use. <coughs> So you can see if the form one, if you want to define a component, you see I want to a uh, grid. So you see the code. It's just a function. <coughs> Easy. <laughs> so <coughs> if you know the hiccup, uh, it's much easier to understand this. So everything will be a vector. You have the tag names as a keyword. You have the attributes list. Then you have the child. Mm -hmm. OK, a bit complex one. Uh, this one is a function return a function. So <coughs> this one, you can think it's a um, component factory. For example, in this, you, you, want, to, you want the time, <coughs> but other people don't use use it, they, they just render it directly. So it gives you the render function, the real render function here. <coughs> so it shows you how much time has been passed. Yeah. So actually it's a local state, then it exports this render fun real render function to you. OK, this one. Yeah, this one is React. You see? It's create a class. Actually, it's called React. It converts all these structures into React class. Uh, it has did mount, it has will mount, it has render function. But it's called reagent render instead of render. Mm. <coughs> Actually, when you do use third party libraries. You, a lot of places you need this form. Mm. So have you written code like this hmm? for production? Have you written code used in production like this? We do pilot uh, project. Um, do but you ever find yourself just looking at the React that it would end up being? Hmm? Do you ever find yourself wanting to see what this would actually be translated into? Yeah, React? yeah. And you look at that when debugging sometimes or never? No. Okay. No need. Mm. So far, we 
did not encounter the problem. Uh, it's very easy to use. Okay, <coughs> any questions? If that's all about reagent, actually. Ah, almost done. Oh. So, no question? <laughs> Oh. You, you moved away from it. What are you using now? Actually, we designed our own libraries. What was your motivation to design your own? Mm, we move more and more to the data oriented design. So we try to use functions to operate on the data, then um, everything will be a data. Even Tier the I.O. actually, if you know Haskell. Uh, everything, even now, uh, our front end is um, a map. <coughs> then it will be fed to a render engine. It's render the, the whole things. Actually, you, you even can think re re reagent, something like that, but it's not that pure, because React. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Okay. Uh, this is a reference. So, uh, reframe is very well documented. Uh, y even you don't use it, you can read this document. It's very nice to read. Uh, the idea is very good, although. It's a bit idea. Reagent's tutorial is very interesting. So if we want to get into this, do we start reading up reagent first or reframe first? You can see the reagent is very easy. It's just a function to vectors. So it, you can ignore it first. Tier you need like form 3 or form 2. So, no more questions? Then I will start the dojo. <laughs> <laughs>